So you've probably heard a dozen times you should eat more protein, but why? Well, besides it being the most important micronutrient that helps build and regenerate tissue, protein is extremely important in regulating weight as well. Whether it's munching on a chicken wing, throwing in some protein powder in your smoothie, or adding some vegan friendly options to your plate, it's on you. So the question is, why should you eat more protein after all? So what is protein? The thing that's in the chicken, right? Well, on a more scientific note, it's a macronutrient that's composed of different amino acids. It's the building blocks of many cells, tissues, organs, etc. Protein helps with numerous functions in the body from like immune system function, enzyme creation, hormone synthesis, energy levels, anything. But especially when it comes to repairing, regenerating and composing the structure of tissues. Enough physiology, let's check the two types. So first is the animal-based protein, which is what you get in meat, fish, poultry, eggs and stuff like this. It's thought to be the more complete protein because it contains the full package of all the amino acids needed. Then it's the vegan or plant-based protein that's found in tofu, different starches, veggies, nuts, seeds, legumes, beans, lentils and stuff like this. It's thought to be slightly less bioavailable and have a little bit less of the amino acids so it's not the completely full package. While that is debatable, it's not the topic of today's video so let's go to the fun bits. Protein speeds up metabolism. Now what is metabolism first? It's the way your body converts food into a human usable energy or ATP. Now during this process of ingesting food, your body actually burns a bit of calories to get those nutrients in, absorb and utilize the food so that you can turn it into energy. Now say you have a meal that only has carbs and fats in, like a bowl of rice and avocado. You will burn a trivial amount of calories, but it won't be high. Now if you add a beef steak, which is a source of great high quality protein in it, your body will burn more calories to turn this food into energy. That's just called the thermogenic effect of protein. It can increase the calories you burn during the process of ingesting, absorbing and utilizing those nutrients, aka turning food into energy. That's how protein helps speed up your metabolism. So anytime we ingest food, we spend energy to digest, absorb and utilize its nutrients. This makes up around 10% of total energy expenditure. Compared to fats and carbs, protein is superior in burning more calories as the body works harder to break it down. Studies have shown that the thermic effect of protein can be around 20 to 35% of the calories consumed compared to the 5 to 15% for carbohydrates and 0 to 5% for fats. So the way I'd like to bump up my protein is, first thing, I eat a lot of meat. I enjoy a good chunk of chicken, probably on a daily basis. Second thing I snack on is some nuts. I will make myself some protein bites made mostly with nuts or I'd have a protein bar close by. Third, when it gets busy, I do protein powders, one scoop in my yogurt granola combo or I'll do a smoothie with yogurt, berries and bananas and I'm good to go. So how does protein help you with weight loss and calorie burning? First is again the thermic effect of food aka burning more calories when consuming more protein. But there are other things like promoting satiety, balancing hormones and increasing metabolic activity of the full body that makes protein stand up in the realm of weight loss. So the general outline is the body expends more calories when you ingest more protein. Say you had a large bowl of pasta, it'd spike your sugar and burn very few calories. Add some fatty avocado to that, digestion is a bit slower, more calories are burned, sugars don't spike as high. Add some salmon to it, you'd burn more calories, feel more satiated and digest it for longer. I have created a newsletter called Keys to Vitality, which brings you one key insight or actionable step every Tuesday in your mail to get you closer to elevating your energy, vitality and optimizing your performance. You'd get things like three steps to fat loss, how to sharpen your focus in four steps, micro workouts for metabolic health or how blue blockers can affect deep sleep. This is the kind of newsletter you're gonna wanna check out. Link in the description below, your call. So while the amount of calories at first seem trivial, this accumulates over time. 
so much so that a high protein diet can definitely set you up on a better path towards weight loss and becoming more metabolically active. More protein also makes you feel more satiated as it increases a peptide called GLP-1 which curbs your hunger cravings away. Also, the energy levels are way more stable when you additionally add like protein and fat to your meal than if you only had carbs which will just spike and drop your glucose levels low. And research backs this up. Some of the potential mechanisms of high protein diets for weight loss rely on increasing satiety hormones like GLP-1, reducing hunger, increasing thermic effect of food and improving glucose balance. Third thing is glycemic control. Protein will inherently improve your glycemic variability and glycemic control, meaning it can help stabilize blood sugar levels. Part of this is because it takes longer to digest and absorb protein. So if we compare having only a bowl of rice, it will spike up your sugar and drop your glucose back down. Whereas if you had a steak with that, it would take longer to digest it and absorb it. So your glucose level and energy will go up, may be maintained at a relatively nice medium moderate level, and then they'll slowly decline back instead of having these spikes and drops. Additionally, protein can increase the most important hormones for glycemic variability, which is insulin, which helps us take glucose from the blood and shove it into our muscle tissue that could be used for energy later. Especially for those that are overweight or insulin resistant or diabetics, increase in protein intake may help reduce the fluctuations in blood glucose and enhance overall glycemic control, potentially preventing all of these energy crashes, inflammation and other things related to insulin resistance. Muscle growth and regeneration. Now you may not think it's that important, but actually growing muscle is very tightly related to having a leaner physique and losing more weight. And I'll explain why. First of all, we need to agree on the fact that protein is the key essential nutrient that helps you build muscle. It helps accelerate recovery and it solidifies, it creates the structure of numerous tissues, cells and organs. So that's why it's important. You cannot build muscle without protein. Adequate protein consumption leads to the synthesis of new protein called muscle protein synthesis, which is just a fancy term for saying growing more muscle. The reason this is important for today's topic is because more muscle means higher metabolic activity. Let me explain. There are two people, John and Brad, at the same body mass index levels, but one of them has more muscle. The guy who has more muscle is going to burn more calories at rest and going to be more metabolically active. That means both that anytime he ingests glucose, more muscle is going to use more of that glucose, so insulin sensitivity is better, but also he is going to burn more calories at rest, which is going to make it easier for him to sustain this healthy weight with more muscle than if he had less muscle, because he can use more food and more energy to actually power up the energy processes in the muscle itself. So if you are on a high protein diet, it would take less work to sustain a leaner physique. Now when it comes to how much protein is enough, the RDI or recommended daily intake for healthy adults goes at around 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. For a person that weighs around 75 kilos, that works around 60 grams of protein on a daily basis. But if you strength train, then your knees are completely different and you need to almost double that amount. So essentially in the scientific literature, you'd see how much protein is enough to build muscle. The numbers are playing between 1.2 grams to 1.5 grams of protein per for the 75 kilogram person that works around to be slightly above 100 grams of protein per day. So what did we learn today? First, that not a lot of people have enough protein in their diets. Second, that high protein diets can help you keep a leaner physique and help boost your metabolism, speed up weight loss and burn more calories. Third, that proteins can help you improve glycemic control by enhancing the secretion of insulin hormones plus by increasing muscle size you get you become more sensitive to glucose anyway. Last but not least, it interferes with certain enzymes and hormones that will make you feel more satiated and less hungry. I'll sign out here, but let me first ask, what are your five favorite protein sources? I'm curious, type it down in the comments below, I will lead.